Uh, the rationale uh, uh, was to create this uh, effort. Uh, we'll describe the data uh, set that is currently available. Um, and I will briefly go over some of the results uh, emerging from the initial efforts, uh, analytic efforts, and talk uh, uh, about future directions. So ABIDE is a grassroots initiative um, aimed to aggregate uh, uh, resting state fMRI data and uh, 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 associated uh, structural uh, data and phenotypic information in uh, individuals with autism and controls for the purpose of sharing data openly. Uh, as of August 31st of uh, 2012, this data set was in fact freely uh, available online for non-commercial use. And uh, uh, we were very pleased uh, in less than a year uh, to put together this uh, data set that involved uh, 17 sites, 20 independent samples, yielding a total of 1,112 uh, uh, individual data sets. I want to spend a few seconds longer than usual on uh, this slide because this lists all the institutes that have been uh, offering their data the, and they list the names of the investigators and the contributors but anyone who collects data knows that behind these names there are even more people and a lot of hours and a lot of efforts and one thing I want to highlight is that 50% of these samples were not yet published, and yet uh, we, gener we generously decided uh, to, uh, to share and put them together. And it's not just an act of generosity, but it's also, uh, it also came from uh, um, a series of reasoning. Partly, uh, Mike gave um, a summary of uh, the rational, uh, the big uh, the big uh, team behind uh, creating uh, uh, large samples openly shared but for autism specifically for autism it was important to us because uh, resistant state fmri uh, seem to provide seems to provide a mean to uh, test the current uh, hypothesis of uh, autism as a disconnection model. Uh, there are several uh, lines of evidence coming from multiple uh, fields uh, supporting this model, uh, both uh, um, from, for example, from neuropathology uh, abnormality in the mini columns, from genetics abnormalities in uh, or. Um, candidates uh, in, um, coding for uh, synaptic proteins uh, uh, suggest uh, disconnection model. And there are more direct evidence coming from neuroimaging, both structural uh, studies and functional studies. The first studies actually come from Pittsburgh that first uh, supported the disconnection model for Marcel Just, and they were task-based fMRI studies. And that's what we, are, we were focused. But instead of using task-based, we uh, uh, leverage on resting state. I don't have the time to go and review the strengths and weaknesses of resting state, but which are briefly uh, listed here, but um, uh, it's, uh, uh, what resting, uh, it's striking that resting state is able to provide um, um, uh, networks that are very similar, nearly uh, identical uh, to uh, task-based uh, networks. Um, and there's a universal architecture that has been um, uh, demonstrated using this approach, uh, both, because of, uh, both because of test retest reliability and uh, um, uh, consistency across and, uh, and within, uh, uh, within sites. Uh, there are a series of other uh, good reasons to use to leverage on this approach that are listed here. And uh, in fact, in the last uh, few years, there's been a boom in applications of this approach into clinical populations in autism. Uh, autism as well. Um, the majority of the studies, this was a review before Abide release, uh, were um, approximately uh, uh, founded on 20 uh, individuals per diagnostic group. And overall, uh, the results showed uh, that the resting state fMRI is a mean, mean to, uh, uh, to confirm these connections in, in autism. But when you zoom in on results to try to understand the uh, mechanisms underlying uh, the disorder, um, things were much more blurry. Uh, there were inconsistent. There are inconsistent findings of hypo connections or hyper connections. There, there is still a question on what is the extent of this abnormal 
abnormality. Some would say that is uh, mostly for, uh, limited to social circuits. Other would say that is uh, widespread uh, um, across all uh, brains, both cortical and subcortical uh, circuits. And uh, the other, uh, one big challenge that the field is not just in autism, uh, psychiatry uh, has to face is uh, the vast heterogeneity, clinical heterogeneity, and likely biological heterogeneity uh, of the samples. In the meantime, the field was also facing uh, emerging challenges, uh, some uh, in particular the, uh, for a neurodevelopmental disorder like autism, the demonstration that uh, micro movements, not the classic uh, art movement uh, artifacts, we're talking about movements below one millimeter, we're talking about 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeter, um, can affect our results and can confound the results. Um, even if, uh, uh, although all uh, people who um, encourage the field to look uh, at this confound carefully also provide a means to deal with this confound, there have been some sort of uh, panic uh, in the field, and some uh, some of uh, led to uh, conclusions, like in, in this natural paper, that the results of, uh, of uh, these connections uh, in autism are largely, uh, potentially, uh, a result of uh, uh, movement artifacts. And uh, in line with this, there was a data, actually a, da a recent data uh, paper uh, from um, um, uh, Dan Kennedy and Michael Titska, uh, showing that although there were some regional uh, connectivity difference between uh, autism and control, whole brain analysis, there were no differences between the two groups. Uh, and in fact, the, uh, the difference instead were between uh, high, uh, group, uh, uh, the group with high movement and the group with the low movement. Uh, this is a sample with uh, uh, 30 individuals per group, and although the study is, um, uh, is uh, uh, alerting us and uh, um, highlight the importance of uh, be cautious about these results, I want to highlight the fact that 30 per group is not uh, helping us in uh, being conclusive. And uh, this is elegantly summarized in a recent review of Baton et al. That is uh, alert that alert is alerting the uh, neuroscience uh, field, not just the autism field, about the risk of uh, of uh, small uh, data sets, uh, not only for false negatives but also for false positive. False positive. In autism, as well as in neuroscience, we have been uh, going ahead replicating uh, uh, prior uh, prior studies. Uh, all, Every, and every study, as I mm, showed you earlier, with about 20, 24 uh, subjects per group. The, we were encouraged by the success of uh, the prior initiatives of uh, aggregating uh, uh, in the functional connecton project uh, resting state ephemeri data of uh, controls and in the DHD 200 uh, uh, resting state ephemeri data of uh, uh, clinical groups. And these uh, efforts not only demonstrated the ability to do this and the willingness of investigators to do this, but also the ability to detect the signal beyond the, uh, the variability uh, inherited with the uh, variation side-by-side uh, -side variation. And so we decided to, uh, to um, uh, uh, invite uh, uh, the, the uh, investigators who have previously published the resting state or through word of mouth to show, who showed interest. And uh, this is the, the snapshot of the data set that we uh, so far is available. And I think it's not just a snapshot, of, uh, a snapshot of what we've been able to do, but it really gives you a sense of where the field, the neuroimaging field of autism is. There are a couple of things, I, I won't go in details, uh, uh, but a couple of things I want to highlight that I think uh, we can use um, to learn from this uh, initiative. One thing is about age, especially it's important here because it's a, mm, or the focus on, on development. So the first, uh, on one hand, the, post, the good news is that resting state fMRI data and investigators sharing this data have been uh, uh, increasingly uh, focusing on younger ages relative to a few years before. In 2008, uh, we put together a, a task-based uh, meta-analysis uh, in autism, and this is the, on, the, on your left, on your left, you have uh, the mean age of each study, and you can see 80% of the samples were adults. 
uh, and uh, on the right you see the age distributions per site of uh, the resistance data fMRI data. Uh, the youngest age is seven. On the other hand, considering that autism is a early onset, very early onset uh, disorder, seven is really late. Uh, so there's a need to really get younger uh, to younger ages. Um, there are also other themes that emerge from looking at this uh, data. One thing that is really crucial is the fact that uh, most of the samples uh, focus on males. S some sites d didn't even bother uh, collecting females, understandably, because of the effort, the intent of uh, being homogeneous uh, as much as possible, especially when uh, samples are small. But as a result, we are we. We essentially, the field doesn't know almost anything about females with autism. Uh, the, the good news is that the field is ahead of many other uh, psychiatric disorders uh, through the effort uh, of uh, uh, standardized measures like the EDOS, the Otis Diagnostic Observation Scale, for which 80% research reliability is required uh, across uh, uh, sites. And in fact, uh, not all sites had this measure, but those who have, uh, have it, uh, there's a, uh, a nice consistency across sites. Um, but let's turn on the results on what the consortium has done on the uh, resting state fMRI data. First of all, we decided to use uh, for analysis um, pipelines that uh, are uh, publicly available. Again, it's not just about sharing the data, but it's also about sharing the tools that uh, analyze so that this facilitates com uh, comparison uh, across uh, um, efforts. Um, so we used an alpha version of this of CPAC uh, that allowed us to run in parallel uh, data, um, both um, scrubbed and unscrubbed. Scrubbed means uh, data where uh, frames with uh, high movement has been, uh, have been removed. Um, and then for group analysis, we use deep perfs. So both CPAC and deep perfs are available online. Uh, and the strategy was to look at whole brain functional connectivity using different parcellation schemes. Uh, and uh, using also exploratory regional uh, analysis, voxel-wise uh, measures of uh, based on resistance state fMRI. Oh, one thing I want to highlight is that all group analysis uh, corrected for site, age, and mean frame-wise displacement, uh, which is an index of uh, micro movements, head micro movements. Uh, and these are the results of the whole brain um, functional connectivity analysis. So the, the uh, colored uh, spheres are each parcellation unit here. It's Harvard-Oxford uh, structural atlas. Uh, we, did, we repeated this also with the functional atlas. And the colors represent the divisions based on mesula metal, uh, where <clears throat> the regions that belong to unimodal association uh, uh, cortex are grouped together and in green, heteromodal association cortex uh, like blue and so forth and so on. And what we see in group comparisons is that A, hypoconnectivity, <coughs> reduced uh, connectivity is present and is actually predominant, but also hyperconnections are evident in autism. And the other thing we see is that uh, uh, hyperconnections are essentially uh, uh, localized um, or limited to subcortical uh, base circuits. In particular, thalamus, thalamus uh, sensory motor cortex for, um, were affected. Uh, and also that hypoconnections were sort of widespread, though if you then run tests, uh, uh, stats, you, oops, sorry, you see that uh, um, paralimbic unimodal associations in this were, uh, were more affected. Um, we also run um, other measures, exploratory measures based on resting state fMRI, and not just functional connectivity. And in particular, FALFF stands for, stands for fractional amplitude of low frequency oscillation. So here you're looking at the amplitude of the bold signal, uh, a filter at the low uh, range. Uh, regional homogeneity looks at the connect connections uh, within uh, a voxel and its uh, nearest neighbor, so it's an index of local connectivity. Uh, voxel uh, mirror homotopic connectivity looks at the connections between homotopic regions at voxel uh, level. 
and uh, degree centrality uh, graph measure. We selected this, uh, these uh, indices because of prior studies showing abnormality uh, and also bec uh, because of uh, like FALFF and degree centrality at the time of the study design were not yet published in autism. And what we learned is that there are, uh, <clears throat> each region can identify, each measure can identify different uh, um, locus of dysfunctions, and to summarize uh, the results of the, all this uh, widespread analysis, we did a conjunction analysis. You can see that in purple blue are the regions that only are um, appear to be abnormal based on one uh, index. Uh, in uh, orange and uh, yellow, you see where the regions that have abnormality overlapping with different indices, resting state fMRI indices, and, and this uh, is uh, highlighting and uh, usual suspects like uh, uh, prefrontal cortex, uh, posterior cingulate, uh, and though more recently insula, uh, but also um, it's uh, highlighting the role, for instance, of thalamus that uh, in autism has been mm, overlooked uh, and if it's been of interest but more for the neurologist, like for uh, with the angle of epilepsy, but here, as far as we can tell based on the protocols shared, uh, the, the kids with autism, the, the individuals with autism did not have any specific neurological disorder uh, or epilepsy. Well, epilepsy was an exclusion criteria. Uh, we also could not avoid to survey the deformal network given the, uh, <laughs> the, the role of, uh, and it's not, we don't know if there's a role, uh, a unique role of the deformal network in autism, but the fact is that people, the, the, the first wave of studies have focused uh, on, this, uh, on, uh, on this network, and we do confirm uh, uh, decreased connections between anterior posterior nodes of the, of the network. Uh, one point I want to highlight is the role of micro-movements. So uh, here is the distribution per each site of uh, the movement, the micro-movement, this is uh, mean frame-wise displacement of each site. The red line is indicating our cutoff for inclusion in analysis, and this is the percentage of frames that uh, have um, a movement above 0.2 millimeter. So, this uh, uh, mean FD has been used for uh, as a covariate in group analysis in the primary analysis in the primary analysis, but we also use the percentage of frames to uh, run secondary analysis on scrap data. Of course, the numbers decrease. We had to exclude a big chunk of, uh, of uh, individuals. Partly is also because we encourage, we had discussions among the consortium whether to do only good data or also any data, and we emphasize as in other uh, initiatives, in the initiatives, the importance of sharing what today we consider bad data because that could facilitate the development of new algorithms for improving uh, that analysis. But anyway, so even in this small data set, in this smaller sample, uh, results were largely, uh, largely similar to primary analysis results. In summary, um, first of all, intrinsic functional connectivity approaches and resting state fMRI can be uh, considered a mainstream approach to uh, examine uh, disconnections uh, in autism. And uh, its feasibility makes possible sharing uh, and creating large data sets. Um, and ABIDE is, uh, is a first step. It has, uh, we have shown that uh, uh, it's possible to share and uh, you putting together this data is likely to give us some signal, but as Mike said, 1,000 data are not uh, necessarily uh, enough and sufficient. In fact, our next steps, on one hand, there are many myriad of analyses that many, hopefully many of you will, uh, will uh, um, apply to the current data set. But on the other end, there's a need to uh, increase the sample. And uh, the way we see it is that uh, in the short term, we would like to just double the sample, still using the strategy of retrospective data sharing. And this is based on the enthusiasm that both current members of the consortium and new, member, uh, new uh, colleagues um, 
of expressing, sharing uh, their data. And so we hope to be able to have a, at least 2,000 data set and split the sample in an exploratory sample and in a replication sample to really uh, get more uh, uh, robust signals. Uh, but also in the longer term, we hope to be harmonized uh, um, in the data collection and being able to have prospective data sharing, um, including not just resting state fMRI, but also DTI and most importantly, genetics and uh, a deep phenotyping. With that said, I want to thank the, all the members of uh, uh, the Abide Consortium. There's a long list. I'll, I gave you uh, the list uh, at, uh, at the beginning of the talk. Mike Milom and his colleagues at the Indy team. Uh, Erin Denayo, uh, who uh, is the research assistant to help me dealing with all the emails. Javier Castellanos and the colleagues at NYU who helped and tolerated me during those months. And I thank you and the floods.